Hey guys, I'm here with a SBR Remington ACR in 556 with an innovative arms can on the end that was generously provided for the review by Silencer Shop. And uh, today I'm taking a closer look at this newest three gun slash AR specific optic from Nikon, the Black Force X1000. It looks very reminiscent of other optics that are basically designed for three gun or competitive run and gun kind of sports in that it offers limited magnification in exchange for a wider area for in terms of situational awareness and field of view. So this one in particular is a one to four and features these really, really nice oversized turret caps, which I like because I hate when I have to, to fiddle with the damn things. And uh, the reticle is illuminated and it has this model in particular has a new proprietary reticle from Nikon called the Speed Force. I guess it's supposed to match up with the X-Force name or Black Force name. This new reticle features dual illuminated horseshoes for reflex shooting and BDC holdover marks below a bright center dot. The center of the dot itself is designed so when zeroed at 100 yards, the base of the dot puts them at 200 yards, the circle beneath that at 300, and the final circle at 400. The marks below that and the marks on the left and right side beyond the plus symbol represent one MOA adjustments each. Interestingly enough, the plus marks on the side represent a five MOA shift left and right and are designed to land on the C zone of an Ipsic Paladin target at 100 yards. Uh, what's nice is it's a true one X when it's dialed all the way down. And so you can use that illuminated reticle combined with that one X as a red dot for close range, like hitting plate racks and whatnot. And then for like more distant targets, dial that four and engage that. Uh, what's nice is this is made out of pretty durable aluminum. Uh, I like it so far. I like it that it's in a matte color and the, that the Nikon logo isn't emblazoned in bright yellow. It's very classy. It has um, the finish of the actual scope is matte, but the writing is in more of a uh, reflective, a little glossy sort of tone. It's, and overall, it's a pretty nice looking scope. Now, they're also offering this optic now in both a standard MOA pattern and a Milrad pattern reticle. And it is etched glass, which is nice. And the optic is basically fog proof. All right, so let's put a few rounds down range and see how the uh, ACR does when equipped with this new Nikon optic. Our target today is at approximately 75 yards. I've got one target down there by MGM and another target down there by Shoot Steel and a new third target that looks very much like it's from Red Dawn actually made out of MRAP armor and it's offered by this new company Heil Machine Ordnance and these things are incredibly durable able to withstand even point blank shots from full powered rifle cartridges though obviously you shouldn't shoot them from too close because of the danger of ricochets now anyway let's go put some rounds down range I've got the reticle illumination set currently to nine, so it's pretty bright. It shows up very well against that black target and, and pretty decent along the white ones as well. So let's see if we can hit that unhappy looking target from MGM. Swing around the side of it. Let's try those little small guys underneath. That's a hit. That's a hit. Try the uh, shoot steel guy in the middle. And finally, let's see if we can get that Wolverine guy. See, I shoot the, shoot his wrists maybe and knock the gun out of his hands. Oh, perfect wrist shot on the, on the left. Oh, swing and a miss. Oh, there we go. But he's still up, so two to the chest. One to the head. Yeah, this thing seems pretty dead on. Now, to see if the 1X actually stays true, I'm gonna dial it down to 1X and shoot the same targets and see if the point of aim, point of impact stays the same even on 1X. Because a lot of times, if you zero an optic at full magnification and then dial it down to one or vice versa, you'll see a point of aim, point of impact shift, even on very expensive optics. We are dry on this mag. Oh, 
Yeah, let's go. Let's hit that swinging guy up top first. Seems pretty dead on. All right, let's try the shoot steel guy in the middle. Oh, we got a jam. Now I'm assuming the reason I'm having malfunctions right now is because I haven't made any adjustments to the gun in terms of gas or whatnot. Uh, and I originally zeroed and ran the gun without a suppressor on it. So there's a huge increase in back pressure. And it is pretty gassy back here, but uh, it is running pretty good overall. I think it probably needs a little bit of oil as well. All right, so let's put some more rounds on target and see if I can actually hit those small underswingers. Hey, that's a hit. That's a hit as well. And I normally try to keep both eyes open when shooting, but when something's that fine, I just can't see it well enough unless I actually close one of my eyes. All right, let's see if we can hit that Wolverine guy. Bam, bam. Comes that headshot again. That's a hit. That's a hit. Oh, shot just over. There's a hit again. Let's see if hit that swinger. Well, I accidentally locked the uh, swinging target behind the uh, MGM, so I guess that's, uh, that's a wrap, right? All right, well, I think overall, I've so far had a chance to mount this on a Steyr AUG, on an X95 Tavor, as well as ACR, and your more run-of-the-mill ARs, and it does phenomenally, and it works very well, provided that the gun you're gonna be running it on is designed for an AR cheek rest or comb height, basically. If you're running this on something else like an HK pattern roller delayed gun, uh, it's gonna be a little, little too high with the provided stock height, which is to say you'll have to buy like, like a comb riser or some such. But so overall, as a short range, short to medium range magnified optic, ideal for engaging multiple targets or engaging moving targets uh, at a fairly decent price point. This, this version of the uh, Nikon Black Force X1000 runs approximately $399.95. I'm sure you could find it for cheaper at a big box store. Overall, very good build quality, excellent, excellent optic for the money, and one that is extraordinarily versatile for shooters who want like a do-everything optic that is neither like too much, too much glass for mid-range shooting, nor not enough to actually reach out to 300 yards, which I think that's where this scope in particular really excels. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burst reviews.